Okay, so welcome back everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and tonight I will be casting a best of three series between Meet Your Makers on the Radiant side and on the Dire side, Skane's Elite. Now, I assume that someone in the chat is about to pop up and say, Triumph, you bloody noob, that is not how you say their name. And I say this because uh, in there, or rather on the Ghost of League and stuff, the A has an interesting little symbol over the top, and being someone who doesn't, not from Europe, don't really know what those little symbols mean, so it's probably pronounced something really, really weird to me. So, just as I used to call Havos Xbox, I'm sure someone will point out the correct pronunciation later. Anyway, so, Chen was the first ban, and I don't know why it's spazzed out there and it's only got a little symbol, but regardless, was also being banned by Meet Your Makers. I noticed that she, some of the viewers were already calling out that uh, Skanes would actually pop out and use a Wisp. Wisp County, Wisp Juggernaut, all sorts of Wisp everything. But as it is, Wisp, the first ban, and we've seen exactly how nasty Wisp plus a power gank can be. Provides a lot of pressure on the map, causing a lot of trouble. Rubik also the next ban there. And apparently all of my little symbols are going to be mini, mini size tonight. Rather ironic thing is the banner for Skane is actually called Mini. Anyway. Second ban, uh, I thought Major Makers uh, was Linnea, the Templar Assassin. So some solid bans all around, of course, Chen, Strong Jungler. Question is, will Skanes decide to grab up Enchantress Singer? as she is rather strong in the same role? But they decide to go for a Lashrak. Now, Lashrak, of course, very uh, very versatile. A little bit squishy, a little bit vulnerable, but at the same time, he's very strong in team fights, can push quite effectively as well. And if you give him the right amount of farm, come late game, he will cause a lot of damage. The double pick, though, for Meet Your Makers. Now, we've had stuff like Lycan, Naga Siren slip through, and Lycan has really fallen out of favor, so... He's likely to get through anyway, but... We've got Enchantress, Naga Siren. Although, as we saw, Naga Siren, if you just pick her by herself and you don't have those big AoEs to go with it, it can be somewhat lackluster, especially if your enemy has those uh, big AoEs to counter-initiate with. And when I say big AoEs, I mean big AoE crowd control stuns, etc. And Meet Your Makers designed to cut into their reserve time. Okay, then. They are really thinking about their double pick here. We'll see what they decide to grab up in a second. So I'm asking if this is going to be streamed to own TV. No, it will not be streamed to own TV. This is sponsored by Twitch TV, so obviously a little bit... Uh, it would be a little bit counterproductive to stream it on own TV as well. And Darkseer is the first pick. Now, Darkseer received a couple of nerfs, but to be dead honest, he is still an incredibly powerful hero. Kind of surprised to see him slip through the banning phase, as it is. He's normally first ban. However, it looks like Skanes have decided to give away the Darkseer. Whether or not they will re regret this in the future, it, we'll see. They will need to be careful about letting Darkseer get free farm, because... Even if he's uh, sent to the soul lane, he can actually get some farm happening. As soon as he gets the pressure taken off him to gank elsewhere, he can start catching up his farm quite easily. He can also duck into the jungle to catch up in there, just using a few jungle stack techniques and uh, just quickly clearing through creep waves with his iron shell is incredibly effective. Windrunner also been picked up by Mitchell Makers. So they have a good solid hero in her. Of course, she fills out many roles as well, depending how they want to run her. In fact, Darkseek might not even be solo top. It could even be mid well, with a Windrunner for Meet Your Makers. Then I'm answer though, the second pick for Skane's Elite. Very solid hero all round. Once again, very common just because of his scouting ability with his play wards. He's also decent on the push as well. Looks like Skane's going for a very push-oriented lineup so far. We've got Lashrak, we've got Venomancer, Tide and they also grab up Tynan. Now, we've been seeing this time and time again the European scene. Is they get Tynan, and they actually give him the farm. So what he does, he gets an early uh, early mech or an early pipe, and he just stands at the front of the fight and just wails away on the tower for his team. Tries to force the enemy, to the enemy team to come down onto the lower ground and fight them. Pops his Ravage to counter-initiate, and then they all go home laughing. The last pick before the second banning phase, though, what will Meet Your Makers decide to snap up? Still very hard to tell because their first two picks are rather versatile. Ten seconds remaining. Kral says, try to scorny. Scorne. Alright, we'll go with Scorne then. There's Lucky Brox says, da. Da, alright. Enigma, though, being picked up by Meet Your Makers. Oh, wow, okay, so basically. Meet Your Makers has three, the three of the best suicide solos in the game at the moment. I'm kind of expecting Darkseid to take the suicide solo, or that or Windrunner. Enigma is likely to jungle in this situation just because he's an incredibly quick jungler. He is very, very efficient because he can just basically nuke down the creep and then respawn minions from. Very, very efficient. We decide. They've got to go into this the second banning phase though. Now this is where this has been. This whole new banning phase has really been throwing a few captains off just because they're not quite used to it. Used to having that last ban there. 
just to uh, sort of preemptively ban some of the more annoying strong heroes. But now they're having to let stronger and stronger heroes through. And one of the things uh, Scorne actually let happen was, uh, well, they let a lot of strong heroes come through. I mean, they don't. Tide Hunter, Venomancer, and Lashrak, they're all good. But to be honest, Enigma and Darkseer are way higher up on the priority list of uh, ban and pick. So I'm very interested to see why. They weren't worried about this, especially when you throw, like, if you have a couple of combo spells like uh, Vacuum and then a Black Hole, or even they could even oh. pick up a hard carry like Void in this situation. Dark Void would also work back. fantastically with both Darkseid as well as Enigma. So I'm very, very surprised to see this amount of uh, A grade AoE being allowed to slip through by Scorne. Lone Druid was the next ban by Scorne, and. I don't really, I don't really know about that one. They, I suppose they could use it remote, uh, remotely pushing the creep wave. Iron Shell is always useful, of course, on the bear. At the same time, though, we haven't really seen a team make really good use of the Lone Druid in this uh, tournament so far in the Premier League Season 3. Juggernaut was banned by Meet Jamaica. I, I think that's Juggernaut. This is very, yeah, okay, it is Juggernaut. I was going to say, this is very squishy. I'm, I'm actually playing on a smaller resolution than normal anyway. So to then have them even smaller, it's quite annoying. Scorner though, banning Disruptor, yeah, solid ban there, very strong AoE, really good at dragging people out of position, something the Windrunner can quite easily capitalize on. Somebody says that the smallest things is <laughs> a feature indeed. Okay, hang on one second, I need to uh, track down something. Apparently this is being streamed on own TV. Okay, so, apparently this is being streamed on TV, which as I said is a bit weird because uh, this is sponsored by Twitch, and normally that's a bit of a no-no, Twitch and... Same same thing when own TV sponsors a tournament, generally Twitch streams aren't allowed to stream your own TV tournament, so... Okay, I'm going to look into that. Thanks, Michelle, for bringing that up. I will try and figure out... Okay, oh dear, okay. Let me just go and take care of this. I'm sorry that I have to stop commentary just a second. I'll bring that to the attention of the admins. Again, Ashella, thank you. Dive now, Keeper of the Light has been banned. That is a very interesting ban. I guess they're a little bit worried. Of course, Vacuum and then Black Hole holding that down there is a very powerful combo. And, of course, he can also allow heroes like Windrun to just spam, 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 spam. And as we've seen, the unlimited mana is quite powerful. Tiny also being banned by Meet Your Makers. Also, Nagasaran banned as well. Nagasaran definitely would have been a possibility for Scorne, but... As we've seen, uh, counter, counter initiation. In fact, this is one of the things that people were saying. You know, the whole counter to, Na to Naga Siren was Light of Heaven with a BKB on his Enigma. I believe that was that LD. I think it was LD calling that out, or was it Lumi? But anyway, it was a very like counter initiation is really, really strong against Naga Siren, especially when you don't have the superior magic stun. So something like Vacuum and Black Hole can be utterly crushing. So ban or, or even even. Even like you throw in there, you throw allow tide or you allow tide hunter to get off a ravage after the Nagas. It's just incredibly powerful. Any kind of big AOE to go with Nagas is incredible. And there we go, a Jakira pick. Scorne decided to pick up the Jakira. And this, as we saw, I was messing around with Jakira the other night. He's a, he's a lot stronger, I believe. We also had uh, Goblin also talking about it as well. Jakira is just miles and miles and miles better than he used to be. His stun is so much more efficient, plus it does damage, it's always nice, but it's just the fact that it's so much quicker. Before it was like trying to aim, it was trying to, it was like trying to line up a bus and throw it at someone. It's very, very slow, very, very unwieldy. It did, it did hurt when it hit, but it was very difficult to achieve. Five seconds remaining. I really want to see, oh wow. Throw Ice Path, Tyna, that can, and Macropy, that could cause some serious trouble there. We'll see what kind of that damage they can do, but right now this is a fairly push-oriented lineup from Scorne, and we've got to remember Jakira can actually help push just because Alder Fire actually does do a decent amount of damage to the towers. And Shadow Demon being picked up by Mitchell Makers, and this is something I have not seen in quite some time. 
I actually don't mind this at all. Disruptions can be incredibly efficient at both disrupting the enemy, of course, and also the stage from disruption can be quite effective as well. That's one of the things, those things. You see Tynan walk in, just take him out of the fight for a few seconds while you clean up his teammates, or you just take the track out of the fight for a few seconds, or even just go for the save. They're trying to focus down on the enemy. You can go, okay, I'll put you away for a few seconds, let the stuns wear off, and then allow you to counter initiate. And they go for the faceless void pick. I said they were going to go for a push, but maybe not so much. Faceless Void, of course, has become a bit more popular just because his ultimate is very efficient. And, like we said, you know, big AoEs go very well with those big lockdowns. And Macropire plus Faceless Void's ult is not a pleasant combo to walk into at all. That said, Shadow Demon is a saving grace that he can try and save people if stuck inside the sphere while being burned down by many different spells. So we'll see what they decide to go with. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I really do like that last pick though in the, in, in the form of Void. This is, oh, Void is, I think, it's been really underrated lately. Most people just focus on, I think for a long time, people have just been completely focused on his late game potential just from his uh, stats, his auto attack, his auto attack with his bash, his backtrack, all those sort of 1v1 situations, but not really focusing on his team fight potential. Just his huge, he's just his initiation value. Sure, he's got a bit of a slow on his time off, but that's not the big deal. The big deal is, of course, just his ultimate, how the way it can just pin stuff down. It's incredibly powerful, and the size of it too and the fact that he can initiate with it very easily. Of course, it is risky, but when you're playing with a strong team, a strong team who's in sync, it can really make all the difference. And he mage though being picked up by Mitch Omega, so it looks like we will be going late game. And I've got to say, they've got the Shadow Demon. That's one of the things we were talking about. Oh, gosh, loves... Of course, Gods, he loves his Shadow Demon versus the Anti-Mage, and it is incredibly frustrating. To be hit by... To be hit by disruption, have those illusions just burn you down. I'm just looking at these lines though. I am death. I think both of these are very, very strong. I don't think either team has a real lineup advantage here. Uh, that said, that said, Void, Prepare Void is sort of a double-edged sword in this situation, just because he can basically, even if he places a really, really good ult, Darkseer can make it work against him. So this does worry me a little bit. It is sort of going to be a double-edged sword for them, but we'll see how it goes down. Now, Darkseer Link is going to be rolling out here. Has actually, it looks like he's going for the fast Sol Ring. We're going, heading back up to top there. And is Windrunner actually going to sit down here as a support, or will she actually go to her own lane? And that's a jungle build there from Enigma. Windrunner appears to be going solo. Windrunner will be taking the solo mid position, I believe. That said, although that's a little bit. Normally, when we see solo, a suicide solo, Darkseid, generally speaking, they'll pick up a shield just to really help them out with the whole harassment issues. 30 seconds to battle. And he's actually quite resilient. He's actually quite resilient. Not only does he have a pretty decent strength game, but at the same time, he's very resilient to the harassment with that shield. It just really helps cut down the damage taken. And of course, he is very mobile as well. And the damage he does is quite ridiculous with Iron Shell. Wagamama, well, they're just scouting out the bottom room there. It doesn't look... Uh, anti mage though, did open up with Blink, so it could be anybody's game right here if it spawns at the bottom, bottom spot. We'll see. anti mage actually just going to walk in there, see if he can find anything. A pause there from Calculus. Okay, back on track then. Link will be taking the solo top, but it looks like, yes, he is. Enigma is just taking a creep there, just denying... Sap some experience. They're going to send. Try not to waste those Eidolons at all. Sends them straight out to do something. Illusion being picked up by Anti Mage. Already the counter wards have gone down. Radiant getting them down. Just looking for some laning wards. They don't find anything though at the moment. Throws down his own one there. Just keep an eye out for TP ganks. Not a bad decision either, especially with the dual lane here. It, become, it could become quite dangerous if a third hero manages to pop up unannounced. But it looks like Fishbone will be rotating to mid at the moment, maybe going for a bit of early. Looks like he wasn't planning to stay down there, he was just hoping to see if he could get some early kind of harassment off. Void, of course, not the best hero to be left to farm alone. He is going to struggle a little bit against the winner. Now that he's got some health, though, should be just fine. Also, does have the poor man shield there, so that is going to make him relatively resilient, along with his back wreck, should he just level it up. 
see Tidehunter. Tidehunter has just got banned in his lane, said, alright, screw this, this isn't going to work at all. I believe he's just going to focus on pulling here. He's going to just try and pull this easy camp in a second there. Well, meanwhile, Shakira will be trying to get Lashrak farmed up in this lane. The dual mid, the dual mid though for now. Let's see, it's five and one for the anti mage here. Compare that to the faceless void for the moment. Faceless void sitting on five and oh, so both of them sitting quite even. This is going to be an interesting lane here. This is normally when you have a melee hero versus this iron shell, it can be quite frustrating for them to farm, even if they're not actually being actively harassed by darks. So he just lays it down just to farm with, and they'll have to get too close to it to last hit something and end up burning themselves. Meanwhile, pulling. A double pull there from Shadow Demon, just going to try and deny the entire wave, and a smart move there from Tidehunter, just going, okay, screw this, this isn't going to work at all in the slightest, knowing that he has to abandon the lane, gets the hell out of there, and just goes to catch up on his experiences while he's farm in his own jungle. Even though having to burn through his clarities already, it looks like he's got 500, he's getting relatively close to his soul ring, he will need that just to speed up his jungling attempt. And Jakira, let's have a look at his skill board. Has opened up with Ice Path first. We'll try and keep an eye on his skill board during the game. I think it's one of the more interesting things to see right now. One of the newer things to see. Meanwhile, Anti Mage 13 and 6, 12 and 1 for Void. Both of them still standing neck and neck. Windrunner not actually being put under that much pressure at the moment. Fishbone can't really do a whole. Once he gets his uh, Plague Wards up, he can use them to scout the high ground. Just to allow him to harass uphill if necessary. Darks here. Not much you can do here. He's just going to try and pull that hard lane there. Anti Mage, on the other hand, well, bold. Basically, all the support. Both teams appear to be playing relatively passive at the moment. Stop it. We'll see how it goes. I, I think we probably going to have to wait until, probably until at least about level 6, level 7, before anybody really gets active. They might try and pick off the Darks here earlier on just to get a bit of push happening, which is definitely possible. Especially since Titan's up here now as well, but he has been spotted, so nothing really going to come out of that. Well, maybe Enigma will decide to pop out a gank with this smoke in a little bit. He could get in behind the Venomat to try and set something up. Of course, going to avoid at this point in time isn't going to be that effective. anti is going straight for the Ring of Health. Looks like he'll probably be working towards an early battle. You see the double iron shells down there. Just for redundancy's sake. You see this melee hero will make it very difficult to farm, but as it is, it's a range hero less track farming. It's not going to be such a big deal for him at all. There we go, Venomancer has thrown down the slow there. Venomous Scout causing some trouble as it looks like they're going to get stuck in here. As they've gone and possibly a little bit too deep, the teleport comes in, Wagamama is here. Down goes the Shadow Demon, and it looks like Venomancer is still being amped up by that Soul Catcher. The Ice Path goes out, doesn't really find any target though, as Anti Mage mostly just shrugs off. It was really just a one second stun. It's only a level one Ice Path. It is relatively short, but the first blood there to Scorne. And unfortunately, they just, just diving a little bit too deep there. Trying to push in, and they paid the price for it. Meanwhile, it looks like the farm is still happening there. In fact, Enigma not even bothering to pop out and help. Thought he might just come out for the early push there, but decided not to. Region, on the other hand, still farming away, has also been not having too much trouble. He's 26 and 5. He's actually handling the winner on really well, even when left alone at the moment. Level 4 versus level 5. Power shot, though, is starting to sting. Looking at his skill, but he is going for the backtrack first. Finishes up to finish off his power treads initially. As Face Boots asked, didn't Scorne play the same lineup yesterday? I am not dead sure. I did not see them play yesterday. So they might have. I wouldn't know. Kuri is bringing up Boots to mid. That's what I'm looking for. I was hoping the Darks here might have picked up something by now, but he has not. He's just trying to get that as he's dies for it. Oh, tries to fake out the Ice Path. Doesn't come out, though. And Shakira is going for a 1 1 1 build at the moment. Going for one of the Auto Fire as well as Dual Breath and the Ice Path. It's a bit of smoke gang coming up mid. Can they make something happen here? We're going to see the disruption in a second. Who's it going to go? I think they're going to try and aim. They were aiming for the Venomans. It's not going to happen though, just because... Well, actually, they might have been able to go for the Void, but decided not to. Is it just expect them to time lift waste? So, you know, all right, don't waste your mana. No real issue. The war's being thrown down there by the Venomans. Counter war thrown down by the raid. Doesn't find anything though.
Slink now just pushing up there with his Iron Shell. Is just farming away from remotely, just trying to keep him at a safe distance. Are the supports stacking? Oh, yes, it looks... No, no, they are not. In fact, he's just, just trying to double pull them here into this creep wave once again. And he will succeed there. Jakira managed to get the double pull off. This is Void headed back to his own limit. And again, Anti-Mage just coming in here. Pushing in deep, they are just going to try and sneak off this top tower, uh, this bottom tower, if nest, if possible. Venomance is still hiding way back there. He's hoping someone will port him, but it looks like nobody else is coming at the moment. Dyer's structures are fortified. And the quest is, can Venomance sneak in a deny here? He's trying to use the wars to help him out there. Does not succeed. Anti Mage will take that. With Arcane Boots already, they can start spamming indeed. In fact, it's an interesting choice there for the Trackers. Decided to go straight for the Phase Boots. It's definitely somewhat unusual. It's for a for a Lashrak, especially a farming one as well. Radiance top tower is under attack. Looks like Scorner will manage to trade for this top tower in very short order. Should be able to manage nicely. Yes, it does go down. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Windrunner currently sitting on Bottle, Magic Wand, and Boots. Just Boots says, there we go. The ult goes in there. Can they make something happen? The Venomous Gale as well. Going to slow down Calculus when he comes out. Uses the Windrunner trying to get away. The Purple is porting in though. Can they make something happen? The stun goes down there. On top of region, Time Walks away. And the Black Hole as well. Power Shot goes in, and they counterattack very nicely. And down goes Faceless Void. And a frustrating result there for the Dire side. Not to mention Anti Mage is still free farming to his heart. He's already 47 and 13 right now. As now it looks like the Dire are coming in, going to get the counter attack of the Orin. Enigma is dead as well. Did he pick up the Blink Dagger before he went down? No, he did not. Actually, no, wait a minute. That's the wrong purple monster. What am I looking at? Misclick there. No. Looks like he's not saving. He's not saving up for anything yet. I was hoping he might be up to about the 800 gold mark, but I'm not able to tell. Actually, he's got two iron branches. This to me says he will be looking for an early mech instead. They just will want to. He just will want to go for more the pushing line, defensive line. I don't think he'll try and dive in early on. Tide Hunter has picked up the arcade boots. I hear something there in the mid there. It's disruption. Power shot. Too early though. Auto fire goes down for Jakira. Gonna throw out the ice parts. Shackle shot gonna slow him down. Jakira tries to run away. Not gonna happen. The burn there from the iron shell causing way too much damage. And we actually. No sleep marathon. We actually saw a dazzle the other day. It was an interesting pick indeed. Should probably go back and check that out if you haven't seen the VODs. As it looks like Anti Mage is, has no fear pushing all the way up. Of course, he does have that blink. Not too worried, actually the time stop, the bubble there, is still on cooldown, another 30 seconds, it looks like Shadow Demon looking for trouble. I think he's just possibly skulking around, he's hoping someone that isn't void will come down here that they can try and gank, but it's not going to happen. As Quix is unable to find a target there, although that said, maybe he will, as it looks like he could actually be in trouble himself if Jakiro finds him here. Jakira level 3 dual black plus 1 in the ice path of 1. They have spotted disruption goes down, but he's going to have to walk through here, and this is going to be painful. Here comes the ice path. That will set him up very nicely. He tries to help out. Will we see a bash? No, it doesn't matter. A couple of auto attacks, and he gets finished off in the end there. As Skane Fishbow calls out LOL. Because apparently that was hilarious just catching him out there. He was there sitting there thinking he was all ninja, getting ready to counter attack, and then found absolutely nothing. Speaking of which, it looks like Link has decided to go in deep and just creep skip here, hoping that he can get this tower push down. Not really going to happen, though. He's actually going to pour it out. Windrunner finding yourself a double damage there. Ravage is up for the Tide Hunter. We'll bring up the gold chart at the moment. It's 1500 advantage for the raining side. So we see a Shackle go down, doesn't latch. Power Shot doing some damage, though. Arcane Boots being popped, dual on oh no, Ice Path there going out from Jakiro. The double damage doing so much hurt on Tide Hunter as well. Jakiro pops the Ravage, counterattacks, throws the slow Ice Path as well. No, it's a dual breath. Power Shot finds nothing. A good attempt from Windrunner. I thought that was going to be an Ice Path, but decided not to go for it. I suppose it would have only been a one second stun as I hear the Shadow Poison go out. Black Hole not up. Another 20 seconds away, and it is going to be a mech indeed for Enigma. There's the Ice Path there. Double Dual Breath as well. Quick's taking some damage. There's the Soul Catcher. Tower goes down. Poison over as well. And the Deny gets snuck out there by Windrunner. Thought he was going to die from the DOTs for a second, but Windrunner sneaky in a Deny. Meanwhile, though, let's check the 
GPMs as it is 413 for Anti-Mage, only 290 for Void. This is going to become quite painful. So better man some more and more wards. He will be the primary sitter. Shrak appears to be getting possibly some drums, some early drums. He has picked up a bracer. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And Boy also pick up a ring of hell. I'm just wondering if he's trying to pick up the fury as well or if he's got something else in mind. Anti Mage, on the other hand, has well, he's almost finished his. In fact he needs like ten more five more gold and then he's done. His battle fury will be complete. And Link has decided to go for an early uh early put of defiance. Has picked up his soul ring, is busy Radiant's picking up bottom tower is under attack. Parts necessary for the hood. Void's ult is up. Macro pie. Do we have a macro pie? Yes, we do. This could cause some serious pain. If Void can land this ult on top of. They land the ult, but can they manage to follow up as well? There's the macro pie goes down. Unfortunately, Mini walks into it. Oh, that should have been a kill. That should have been a kill, but a big misclick from Mini casts the macro pie and then walks straight into the Void ulti. Oh, Mini probably kicking himself there. That should have been a much needed kill there on Anti Mage. The tower does get taken at least, but it looks like they are going to trade. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Andy Mage's fury is done. Boy is going to teleport out to mid. There is also a teleport top as well. It looks like the most of Dice are opting to push down on this bottom tower. Is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. We're going to find yourself a double damage room there. Second one in rush is found. Who was that? Who was that? I need to bring that back up. I'm, double, I'm, I'm retarded. That's a regeneration room, not double damage. Apparently, I've gone colorblind. So, Enigma has finished up his mech. And this gives him plenty of attrition value in the mid game. This means, do they have anything? Are they actually going to try and push with it? Or are they just going to play defensively? If Darkseid can get his pipe, they may decide to go for it. Anti-Mage is becoming quite fat, and he can quite easily flash farm ahead of Void. So Void also trying to build up his fury by his battle fury by looks, but he is also getting relatively close to about 800, 1,000 gold away. The Shrak did go for the drums. Decided not to cut his build short or anything. Has decided to go straight for the drums. We'll probably pick up some of the hex now or even a bloodstone. Let's see what Link has got. Link has finished his hood of defiance and it looks like the gold shot is gradually falling away in the favor of the radiant side. Die not really making too much of an impact. 3k plus experience lead as well as I hear a bit of a conflict there. There's the ult being popped out by both heroes. Yeah, so it looks like can they get stuck in there? There's this disruption. Gonna try and take out Andy Major blinking away. Looks like he will escape. Power shot him once again. And Wagamama very low. Oh, the Shrak charging in, going in the wrong direction. Gonna find out the ice path goes down. Dual breath as well. The Shrak is likely to die. Throws down the split earth. But Quicks is somehow still standing. And mostly I'm gonna blame it on those disruptions. So good. Such a good spell. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Anti mage though, gonna start getting out of control with this farm. Has also picked up well, the case looks like he's finishing his power trades at the moment actually. There we go. He does finish up his power trades. I bet say no. It's not going to be a. It's not going to be a ba uh, anything crazy. No. It is just going to be a set of simple power trades. That should avoid finish his. Yes, he did. Smoker deceit there on the shadow demon. I'll just check the dice side. No, no smoker deceit on them.
Titan to busy building a mech. He's getting relatively close to it. Looking for the haste run at the moment. Windrunner gonna find it, bottle it up, get ready to move out. She looks she's looking tough. She's looking for some trouble here. Might find Wagamama. I don't know if she can kill him by herself. Maybe with the haste room. Probably easiest for them to wait for a simpler target shot. Problem is for them, they're mostly keeping to themselves, trying not to engage too much. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Secure clean up. Nice and easy. A smoke being popped though by the radiant side. They're looking to try and pick somebody off. Can they find anybody? No, it doesn't look like nobody's bottom at the moment. A slight wise, sadly, no hawk or the like to scout ahead of these two heroes that aren't going to charge up. This is again pretty dangerous because they can't see anything up here, so they could be walking with a trap for all they know. Especially the enemy spots he's smoking up. See this eruption go down, the counter attack coming out now. It looks at the black hole as well! And this is a pretty easy kill. The void gets absolutely sniped, but again, the black hole being used just for that snipe. Get the feeling that Anti Mage is smirking to himself right about now. Saying something about being the only hard carry. The shackles are a great shackle there on Tidehunter. Can they make something happen? Ice Class comes down there. This is damage amp there on top of Quakes. He needs to back off. He's going to shield himself with the shadow there, and they drag him back in closer. They share their aids. The Shrek has picked up. I believe he might also be going for an early Urn of Shadows out. And actually, it also, obviously, that could also be turned into something like a Yules, but I don't normally see Yules on a Shrek all that frequently. It's relatively uncommon. Basis Boy, they're still trying to build up this, uh, still trying to build up his Battle Fury. Of course, he has been slowed down quite a bit. You see the GPM, though, he's catching up just a little bit, 370. But compared to Andy Mage, of course, he gets his Battle Fury. Because of his mobility, he starts to farm out of control. Has also gone for an early Vladimir's offering as well. This is actually looking extremely dangerous for Scorner at the moment just because we've got the pipe done for the Radiant side. Also, they've got a mech done and dusted as well. This gives them a ton of effective health. anti Mage though, is actually trying to clean up this stack here. He's doing a lot of damage though. He gets jumped on by... Oh, no! He is too fast, blinks away, and Faceless Void, at the very least, will clean up this ancient stack. Somewhat wasted in the end. Then, meanwhile, can we see an attack on mid? I'm just waiting to see Void. Void has not had a great series of alts so far. He's had a couple of questable ones. Jakiro had a decent one on Anti Mage, and then Jakiro went and messed it up by walking into it. And then just then, big waste there. And now it's down that like creep by finding absolutely nothing. Nothing it has again been very passive. These two teams, both of them with these hard carries, not looking for any trouble. They're not, not wanting to overextend at all. A couple of Tempted ganks here and there, but both teams being relatively passive so far. Just checking the items to see if anybody's cranked out anything Dyer's interesting on it. Nope, it is, is mostly the same apart from Calculus, has also found himself a four star in the first 20 minutes. So Anti Mage picks off yet another hero now. He didn't go for them, and he didn't go for the Mana Break build either. He has gone for Spell Shield as well as Blink Alarm, so he wasn't actually planning to be that aggressive, to be honest. That said, it is 19 minutes in and he's level 15. This is probably the scary part. You see, his level right now is absolutely out of control. Experience for a minute. There we go. Now, you compare that. Anti Mage, I think it's partially. I'm actually not sure exactly where he picked up most of that experience, but he's currently sitting on 630. Compare that to a 400 EXP per minute. That is pretty damn crazy. He is so far out of control, it's not funny in terms of level. I just don't know right now if the Dire... Well, they do have Void's ult, they've got Ravage to follow up, they can put him inside a Macropyre or even just get the DOTs working the magic on him. It is definitely possible, but it is definitely going to be rough, especially since Void is still relatively behind. Now, the question is, is he going to go for a simple lifesteal item, or is he going to go big? Go big or go home, as they say with Void. It's one of those things. A Mask of Madness is a go big or go home item. Honestly, I'd like to see them build damage first, because the early game attack speed is not brilliant, but uh, maybe Rishan's just saying, you know what, I need some lifesteal now. And I might as well just finish off the Master Man, it's just for, sh just for giggles. Jakiro's 
Jakira also Jakira also picking up her stuff, which now this could be Yule's. Yule's for Jakira is a little bit more useful just because he can use to set up the macro pyre a little bit easier. It could be going for four stuff as well as it will help him just kite as well. Or it could even be a necro book if they're just planning to push in. Mostly comes down to how they want to play, but so far again, still pretty passive. Tidehunter, still nothing there. Has got his mech done though. Enigma now also has a blink dash. Scout out this ward here, clean that up. And I think a new run in. Doesn't look like anybody's going to go in here. The vacuum goes in, they're going to drag the Shrac out of position. Decides not to counter attack with the stun though. Dyer's structures are fortified. Anti mage 3k in the bank. Void 600 in the bank. That is not a good look at all. They're seeing three ports there. No real troll coming down here. In fact, nobody decided to meet them. They're just going to sit here and farm some more. Ravage this up and ready. They could well make this happen. If someone tries to jump in, they could quite easily take him out. Do we have the ult from Void? Yes, we do. That will be up to Jakira to redeem himself and not walk inside the orb this time. Dyer's top tower is Should they use it anyway? Windrunner, though, going to walk into the enemy jungle. Will she find the Lashrak? No, it doesn't find the Lashrak at all. Boy, again, finding nothing. Has got his max dealt lethal, though, at the very least. See the push on top. The ports are coming in here. Can uh, looks like Scotty. Can they make something happen? Shaku goes out. Doesn't find any targets. A good attempt. There was searching for the Venomous. He didn't find him. See that remote farm happening again. Looks like the Shrek might be trying to sweep him beside them. As I hear the stun go out. Disruption there. Who have they managed to disrupt? It has been tied under the stun again. Venomous girl goes out. Finds nothing. Vacuums in. In there. The wall of replica goes down. Power shot finds nothing as well. Shadow Demon also opting for early power boots, uh, power treads there as well. We're not moving back out. His power shot, nice and easy. Igman now. I'm waiting for a big blink initiation from him in a second. Shackle shot, doesn't find a target though. Definitely thinking about team fighting here. They've got the ults to do it. They could go for it. That's it. Their opponents have all of their ults up as well, so it's somewhat scary. It looks like the Radiant. They are getting ready to defend. Are they going to move in? No. Just back and forth here. Neither team really wanting to commit at the moment. Winner on it goes bottom. Finds himself a haze room. Maybe he should decide to move in now. This split earth again. No, it is just going to clean up creep. And this girl goes down. They're just hoping they can pick someone off. And there we go. They're going for the pick off there. So Hayes though being popped as well as the four step. Boy just being kited. He did go for a mask of madness. Boyd sensing a trap. Backs out wisely. Secure taking a lot of damage there, unfortunately. Heal himself up. And looks like the Shrek is doing yields. That is definitely different. Ice Path goes down though. There's Shadow Demon. He gets taken up by the Split Earth. Leap in from Void. Finds no target. So Ravage gets popped. The Shrek is still alive. There we go. We've got the. Oh, oh, there's a black hole catching three enemy heroes. The Dire in a lot of trouble. There's the Mana Void as well. Down goes two heroes. A double kill there for Anti Mage. And Void about to die. Power Shot will finish as well. Windrunner gets a deny on the tower and cleans up an enemy hero. And that could not have gone any worse for Scorne. Except for the fact that Titan has survived. And I use that term loosely because he's being run down by a Darkseer right now. Can he get a deny from the creep? He was denied by a neutral. Trollberg there. Taking the kill, Trollberg. It's a Furbelg. And he says, you know, I don't care. I'm just going to go over here and kill Roshan. Because I can. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen.
Now they could push this lane potentially, but then again, it's it's still pretty early in the game, so you see they're already back up. In fact, the buyback's not that high even yet. Level 12, see, it's only 700 gold, it's not a big deal anyway. Not that he had it up, but... Still too early to push this way. He's just gone down the smart thing, gonna go on for early rush just to make himself harder to kill. And more Shadow Demon, gonna do some warning up here most likely. Yes, he is. Double damage being found by Winner up. He's gonna bottle it up. You see the pressure being put in there. Void actually not going toe to toe -to -to that well. He has got Mask of Madness turned on. Those illusions kind of hit him pretty hard. You see him go in there and lost most of his mana to them. And he wall getting cleaned up there. Yeah, just farming away to his heart's connect. 589 though for anti mage. 3 400 there for Void, which is a long way since where he came from. Naturally speaking, 400, but he's still 180 GPM behind. It's definitely not looking that good. And this comes down to last hit. Anti mage not only has he been taking stacked ancient left runs, and not only has he got a whole bunch of kills, but he's also a good 100 CS ahead. This comes in the last hitting this, uh, the last ability to last hit there. And he though, his man style is done as well. Definitely very scary. Shiva's on Darks here as well. Is it, how can I move up? They might try and pick up Boyd once again. Though, still not coming out of the state. There we go. Ice going. Ice Park just going to use the farm. Again, both teams still activating farm mode here quite heavily. Shrak just trying to stack. Not well, just going to harass and kill those. Again, Enigma looks like he's building a BKB, and they might not. They might not even seriously move out until Enigma gets that BKB, just because it will allow him. He uses his ulti with complete impunity. You won't have to worry about getting hit by a Ravage from the side or something. Andy Mage, so fat. 4.8k in the back there. He is so damn rich at the moment. It's counts. I just don't know how Void is going to manage to stand up. It's going to come down to the lock-in. We saw exactly, uh, we saw yesterday how f uh, a ridiculously fat Phantom Assassin just could not keep up because it just came to lockdown. It wasn't so much mobility issues. It was just huge issues with massive lockdown. And to be honest, it's going like they've got that with a couple of the right items. They could definitely achieve that same effect. They've got Titan with his uh, Ravage. They've got Jakira, obviously, who can follow up. They've got Void as well. And then on top of that, they've got Split Earth if necessary, and they can throw in their extra self as well, like even try and build up. Heaven Tower, but if necessary, or even just grab a hex on somebody. We use them out of the fight. As I see, Sleeping Moss asking, isn't that a pub build, the Mask of Madness on Void? It comes down to Mask of Madness is one of those things. Personally, I prefer to see the damage on it early and then go for the Mask of Madness, but the deal is, it's a they already know that they're behind. They know they're falling behind. They know Anti Mage is farming out of control. They know he's going absolutely b ballistic over there, and that Void can't catch up with though. That said, he's going to jump in. He's going to try and set this up right now. There's a the Macro Pie. They need to chain these stuns up correctly. The split Earth is well. Ice Pass stack here. Will they regret this? No, they get the kill there. But of course, he has the Aegis. He is about to blink out. Shackle Shock has disruption there on Void as well. They're going to try and pick up Void in a second. No, actually, that is Lashrak. Never mind. Lashrak is dead. Ravage goes down, but it's a complete waste. As now Anti Mage is going to beat up Tidehunter. Tidehunter runs all his life. Can he get away? There looks like another Shackle coming up. There it is. Shackle is going to go. Doesn't land though. They give it the back and draw him back. Dual Breath in there as well. There's the old for Anti Mage. Anti Mage still on the warpath. Yules gets used on Anti Mage. Black Hole and Blink from Enigma catches all three. Oh no, this is terrible. But it's going to the Dark Seal Wall as well. Leap out from Void. But can he get away? They're going to pick up a Shakira as well. Shakira goes in. Gets cleaned up by Nine Shell. Void has no escape. And Anti Mage is just too damn fat. The farm never really started for Scorne. And Anti Mage stamps the last of it out. Yes, well, you don't use spells against it because apparently Anti Mage will just beat you up. 
and make your day a complete misery. That's quite bad. But going back to the thing I was talking about, I think they I think they just realised, you know what, we're falling behind. To deal with this anti mage, we've just gotta go big or go home. And it just comes down to the fact they were hoping that they could protect the void, but as it is, they couldn't. Because pound for pound, on gold coin for coin, you know, Mouse Commanders is one of the higher high most cost effective forms of da of damage output. But at the same time, at the same time, of course, it makes you very incredibly squishy. But when you're packing a Ravage, these uh, Voids ult, and then you've got, of course, the stuns there from the Kira, as well as the Latrak, then you're not as worried about not being able to protect the Void, because you've got lots of lockdown. But as it is, Anti Mage is just jumping them left, right, and center. And of course, that Aegis really helped out, but it's already lost its top racks. The Anti Mage is tearing it to bits. There we go, they are going to try and chain some Anti Mage, but it's not going to work, because look at his items. Look at his items. He's got a heart. He does not really care at all. Not even slightly. See the void? No, it changes his mind there. It looked like he was about to ult for a second. Changes his mind. He says, alright, you're just going to surge away. Why even bother? He faces this void now looking for his own. I believe he's looking for... I think he's looking for a BKB. That would make the most sense to me. Just because it would help him keep annoying things like Soul Catcher off him. And he made Oh no, he's looking to ult! And then we see the Yules being used there on the Lashrak, on himself, just keeping himself up in the air so he couldn't be used as ticking time. We saw that he's missing around about 900 mana. Had we had a level 3 mana void land on that, that would have been an insta-give Lashrak. Plus, probably would have taken out his teammates next to him as well. The pause coming in. Disruption, though. Void now leaping forward. He is going to try and take out Quicks. Quicks is unlikely to escape. No, he gets hit there by a bash to stun from... Most annoying there, from stun from uh, Enigma. I, was trying, I think the disruption of the ult was also used, the purge was used on him as well from the Shadow Demon. Are under and it is going to be a Mithril Hammer for a BKB in a second, Dyer's but the barracks... barracks has fallen. Oh, and anti mage just go, you know, well, nobody here, let me just kill these barracks, just casually. I'll take them as well, and I might Dyer's just try and take your top barracks. barracks as well. In fact, I might try and 1v3 you, hang on. No, changes in mind. Decides to, uh... I'll go and finish it off the range barracks over here. Gets hit by a stun slow as well from the Venomous Gale. Blinks away. Besides, he does not want to fight. He has got five seconds though on his man, so once he gets in, he may change his mind. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. Clean those up because he can't. <laughs> it's, a full, it's basically a full time job to keep the anti mage away. Just gonna let the loot and finish that off, and they do not succeed at keeping anti mage out of their base. Andy Mage has also picked up an Eagle Song with Port's top though. It looks like Void may be in some trouble there. Shackle shot pity down both there is great shackle backtrack though, gonna prevent that damage. A hex down on him as well. The ice part though, catching both raining heroes down. Oh, not a fantastic ult there from Void, managing to miss one of the heroes, although Windrunner Calculus probably walks straight back in Doesn't really care. There's another ice part, the shackle as well. Link just gonna punch him to death. And a double kill for Calculus as well. See the gold chart has never really been in favor of them as it looks like Enigma just pops it down because the GG's have been caused. It's, you know, why not? Let me, let me just ult. I've got a BKB and an ult. I want to use it. But the GG's have been called Meet Your Makers, proving to be far too strong for Scorne. Actually, Scorne, they had it. Like, I like their lineup. It's just the execution was not fantastic. The fact that Anti Mage just farms so much harder than Void. And of course, there were a couple of early gank attempts on Andy Mage that just did not work out because people were walking into, uh, rather, a certain, a certain, uh, a certain dragon was busy walking into a certain ultimate. And yeah, plenty of potential from these ultimates, from these CCs, these lockdown spells, just not managing to quite carry it out. Just the communication and the execution was lacking. But in the end, guys, this is a bit try for man casting me to make his versus Scotty. This is only game one, the best of three series, though, so stick around. We will be back with game number two in about five minutes. And of course, big shout out to Owens, uh, not Owens, a big shout out to Twitch TV, as well as Steel Series, our major sponsors for the Premier League Season 3. Check them out on Facebook as well. Also, you can follow me on Facebook. My name is Triumph Man on Facebook. No spaces. And, of course, for any information about the Premier League itself, do make sure you check out whoops, the Premier League.eu. And it's all the pertinent information as well as results, links to VOD, stuff like that. You can also see our YouTube channel. That's where we upload all the VODs. But other than that, guys, stick around. We'll be back in about five minutes with another match.